Welcome into Fantasy Pros MLB. This is Leading Off Live brought to you by Prize Picks. Sign up today for Prize Picks and use the promo code Leading Off because it's good for your health. It's me, Joey P, Joe Pizabia. That, of course, is the Welsh. And it's you, the Peanuts, the Cracker Jacks, hanging out, talking baseball. We got a lot to go through today. Razor Ramon must be a happy boy in the Peanuts and Cracker Jacks chat because Welsh, his Cincinnati Reds are at the top of the National League Central. Who'd have mm -mm. thought? Let's go. And we are inching ever closer to our 14,000 subscriber goal. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe. Click that little bell till it goes ding. Also, because Welsh, I told my daughters that if we get to 14K, we're doing a show with mustaches. So they both subscribed. They don't like I bet at all. They but both loved of them like, well, it. I'm on I, that. Yeah. I got to I actually got to spend some time with your daughters when you were out here. <laughs> and knowing their personalities, I bet they were telling all their friends and everyone they know. <laughs> so they could also probably mess with it. I imagine they want you to have like evil, but you know, evil henchmen like, like woo -woo -woo. I mean, I, w I don't know. I don't know what it's gonna be. I don't wanna I don't wanna put a, fingers. a label on it. Yeah, but that stuff takes like a month at least to probably oh, you for know, you you two gotta weeks. buy mustache wax or kinds of things that you need but uh we got to start with this we got to start with the big red machine because joey Votto came back yesterday had a beautiful <laughs> moment with the crowd everybody cheering for him he went two for three with a homer the reds win they're at the top of the national league central they are now a half game above they are nine and one over their last 10 games they have won nine games in a row welsh this is great like i feel We've talked all year about all these feel-good stories in baseball, right? The Cincinnati Reds right now, they might be the top one. Well, but who would have thought in the NL that the Arizona Diamondbacks and the Cincinnati Reds would be at tops <laughs> of their division? I think both of those are big stories. But the Reds were the, I mean, I said it, what is it like six weeks ago, a month ago? I was like offhandedly talking. I'm like, ah, the Reds stink and blah, blah, blah. And Razor got all pissy and people getting mad up there in the chat because I said it. Because it's like, well, this is perpetually a bad team. And there were some bad pieces. And then they've started to implement in some of the young guys. The pitching was coming through. But but they're doing this without Nick Lodolo, who might have been their most locked down pitcher of all of them. Hunter Green, uh, not this year, but Hunter Green has made it happen. They, you know, they've got the pieces, man. They've got some veteran talent. They've got uh, some rotation pieces they need to get going here. They've also yeah. got a bullpen. They got Alexis Diaz. I mean, it's an interesting uh, group there led by uh, Matt McClain, Ellie De La Cruz, and they still got more to come. Well, here's the, you know, the disappointing part is Hunter Green going in the IL. So that's no fun. Yeah. Like that's, that definitely hurts them. I, don't, I mean, the pitching, if you can go out there and acquire some help, that's great. I mean, maybe you can say in this, but if you're the Reds, you gotta, you have to support these kids. You have to send a message and they might not want to go out there and, you know, blow up the system because the system obviously is why they're competing. But I think to the, to the point of, if you've watched some of these teams that have rebuilt the right way, it's through young position player talent, which is why I haven't lost all hope for the Mets yet. But if you look at what the Cubs did back in the, what, 2014, 15, 16 era. Yeah. If you look at what the Astros did, right. Bringing up Alvarez and Tucker and Bregman and all those guys. And Altuve could even be part of that discussion too. It's about building those internal systems where you have position players and then you go out there and you find prime time pitching talent that's been out there in their, you know, mid thirties. Cause those guys typically do hit the free agent wire. And those guys, you, you bring in those hired guns, whether it be John Lester, right. Or Justin Verlander, or, or you make a trade for a Garrett Cole. You do that when or you have enough capital to do it. Like Richard said uh, just a tiny bit ago, which we talked about, and I still I still feel pretty strong about this. Shane Bieber, you know Shane Bieber. It seems yeah. like the guy this year that they but can go out and acquire for Shane Bieber. That's the question. But they've got pieces throughout. I mean, I don't think Shane Bieber is going to take big prospects, but the Reds are top to bottom. They've got uh, big lower in names. Carlos Jorge is kind of a stud. Hector Rodriguez, these are both guys at low A. Um, they've got some guys here in the complex league. They've got upper players, but I don't think Shane Bieber, I, I, I said this um, the other day on ITL, I think we're going to be surprised at what the return looks like in a Shane Bieber trade. Mm -hmm. And the Reds have all the pieces. They share the complex. There's familiarity. And the Reds should be pretty hyper aggressive. And, and there's also like, you know, not a weird conflict of like Bieber going in divisional stuff. It's not whatsoever. I think that makes a ton of sense for this team. Get some veteran leadership in the bullpen as well. Guy that can go deep into games, even though, you know, I don't love him for fantasy. I think it makes a ton of sense in the world. I would, it would behoove them to be one of the first to make one of these trades as well. The Reds just jump right into the market. 
And now I don't know why people are complaining about my audio. I've got everything the same that I do every single day for all these shows. And I'm like the loud Italian, so I don't know what's going on. Well, do I sound yeah. loud enough to you? Yeah, I mean, you don't sound like crazy yeah, loud. We saw, up. We saw this thing. What's going on here? I don't yeah. understand. Maybe Curry I'm too loud. Maybe I've become too loud, and you no, are the more stationed volume. No, I want you to be super loud. So maybe we should put a <laughs> poll up as Joe's audio. See, uh, Brian says your audio sounds fine to me. Your, your so audio we'll... sounds fine. I just mm. think I, I am louder than yours. You're just coming in lower, like I was telling you yesterday. Right. Should I put so. the mic up here? No. <laughs> should I put, I'm going to talk like this. I'm going to talk very close. Is that good? Like me. Oh, no. Yeah. You're te no, technically in radio. Hello. Right? I'd like to order something. <laughs> uh, that's what I'm going to talk about. Like the that. three, three finger rule for good microphone skills. I'm not touching that. All right. Let's go to the uh, Louis arise portion of the show because we can, uh, another five hit game. <laughs> Unbelievable. Uh, the Marlins crushed the Blue Jays 11 nothing yesterday. Arise uh, averaged back up over 100. Uh, and uh, now he is in a situation with Ty Cobb, Stan Musial, and Tony Gwynn, Ichiro. Uh, those are the uh, the guys who have had four hit games in a season. He's had uh, four or five, excuse me, five hit games in a season. He's had four or five hit games in a month. So that is absurd he's he, playing on a whole different level well you're feeling he's crazy man he's crazy i know my stuff with him and everything like that it's awesome he's like the coolest points league guy and you know funny thing uh bug and i were doing the other day is when you get into the world like i don't play any leagues on yahoo anymore i don't know if you do uh i play in no. some other oh no 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 i pl zero yeah zero. Not a fan. i play in some no other spots now but there's something i always liked back in the day about the algorithmic rank, you know, where you just go and you look and you're like, oh, this guy is, you know, 24th on Yahoo. And their whole stuff is built off of, you know, whatever the hell they're doing. It's like they weight different stats to be more important. Well, I don't see that anymore because I don't play on Yahoo. I don't really play on places that have that. But to go and look and see what the algorithm puts out for some of these players is wild. And even Arise, who, and this is all about Arise here, even though, you know, he does nothing in your counting stats whatsoever. He's still like top 70 or 60 overall in fantasy, according to Yahoo in their algorithm, because his hits are so much. I just think it's always weird and crazy going and look and, and then kind of thinking about like, oh, how does that arbitrary rank number for them actually work? And definitely batting average has always been like a big piece of it because like, do you think Luis Arise is a top 100 fantasy player? Oh, top 100 in Roto. See, with, you know, batting average being such a depressed thing. I think he is. As long as he's scoring runs, as long as he's getting on base. Like, I mean, I, th I think it's, I think he is. And I've never been a big Louis Arise guy. My co-host on Sunday, Matt Stryker, loves him over his, every year. He always talks about Louis Arise. And I get all the things you're saying, too. I think he's right on that fringe because, again, he's not a multi-dimensional player because he doesn't offer you power. He's not going to drive in a ton of runs, probably depending on where he's hitting in the batting order. No, he but, just doesn't. No runs, no stolen bases, no uh, yeah, homers. That's well, like mean, definitive. And and I think that that's that's the problem. That's the that's the difficult passage there when you're trying to evaluate him. But he does that one thing so well that. You know, and it's such a deficit everywhere else. I mean, so hard to find I me. Mean, who's hitting 390? Who's hitting 400? Oh, it's yeah, absurd. no. There's so no doubt. In formats, I get it. In head-to-head -head roto categories, I totally get it. Because like top 100? Do you believe any player who well, is who's a singular... who's in the top singular... 100 right now? Who are the names around that? That, that I, would be I don't my... have it. I don't well, you should. That. If you're going to have that I, argument, you should have I'm going to bring right up Yahoo and all that. Uh, but well, I actually okay. don't have a league. We, Bob and I would create a league every year just so we could look at the ranks, even if we don't play. <sighs> but I don't even have a league that I'm playing on there this year. But like, If somebody okay, let us know who has how about a this? league, put it in the Estory chat, and Cracker Jack. Estory Ruiz. Give me the guy Is he a top five... 100 player? Uh, again, it's like fringy. I, I mean... In my world, no, but I understand the justification. But if Arise is a top 100 player, Estery has to be a one a, a top 100 oh, player that's fine. because because he is the the number one stolen base guy. He is two stolen so bases as Arise is to batting the average. Specialists, the high end specialists being in the fringe of 100. Uh, they, I want to know the names of the five guys from 95 to 100 and 100 to 105. That's yeah, someone look about. standard five Somebody by five. Do don't don't do it if you have like an OBP league or something. Yeah, don't do that. Don't do don't. that. Let's do the rookie looky though. Uh, Henry Davis made his God. debut, had a double and a walk, not too shabby. So we'll keep a close eye on him. Uh, spoiler alert, he will be in the uh, the video this week for the waiver wire. Got to talk about him. Also, 
uh, rookie looky here. The Diamondbacks recalled Alec Thomas from AAA. And so, hit a uh, Yeah, uh, he was demoted after hitting a buck 95 with two dingers and then came up yesterday. Uh, 23 year old former top prospect hitting 348 with three homers, two steals in 26 games at the AAA level. What are your thoughts on Alec Thomas rest of season as the Diamondbacks continue to send guys down, get adjusted. McCarthy came back better. Thomas hopefully comes back better. The Yankees are probably looking at this going, hmm, maybe we should do this with Anthony Volpe. Give him a couple weeks off and let him figure it out. So do you think Alec Thomas is a guy worth targeting? Yeah, I definitely think you watch. I don't know if there's a format I'm going to be like, hey, go and look at him right now. But the cool thing or the exciting thing from before was that he definitely had some underlying stuff that told us he was going to be much better. Hard hit percentage, 10% higher than last year. Had a, a over 260 XBA. Barrel percentage was doubled from last year. So all of those things work really well. He just, what like all these hard hits he was putting up, he wasn't mm-hmm. actually getting any contact into. And they're going to give him a, a shot to just go forward again. Luis, uh, Josh Rojas, who got sent down, absolute just disaster train this year. Yeah. I think yeah. he was the second... Most at bats in Major League Baseball without a homer. Andrew Benintendi was number one. It's Miles Straw and then him. So he's going to go back and get that stuff going right, here. We but have some data here, Welsh. By the yeah, way, and by the yeah, way, I just want to point out. Hold on, go go sure. three up there to Fabby Davis. Three How is that a bad comparison? This person saying mine is you a bad. Con- somebody out, bro. Mine is the best comparison because I'm giving you the number one stolen base player who doesn't really provide elite yeah. anywhere else, and I'm giving you the number one batting average player. So I hope you're saying someone else is a bad comparison mine's a, it's great I comparison because i like when you take things personal i don't i'm okay. taking it very so personal. anthony okay. hughes says arise is number nine in yahoo <laughs> and then john v says ruiz is 68 arise is 25th so i guess it's their their leagues whatever that situation is but uh, and then the da- wonky said standard five by five on espn according to player ranker a story is 10 and arise is 40 i think that is so stupid on both ten? sides it also ten? right there you know what this does this shows how ridiculous these websites stupid little rank algorithm is and how they weight it because it's not evenly weighted as it shouldn't be but one categorical win weighted esteri is the 10th best fantasy player in standard five by five arise is the 40 get out of here get out of here with that noise yeah i'm trying to see where he is in my uh in my head-to-head points league where everything is pretty well balanced in terms of pitching and hitting and stolen bases and all that stuff so i'm trying to look for him here and that in the meantime while i pull off that data uh let's talk a little bit about the injuries we had francisco alvarez negative x-rays on his right hand that's a good thing liam Hendricks is going to resume throwing so fingers crossed from him but on the white Sox side still uh we had tim anderson out again with that shoulder issue alejandro kirk is now hitting the 10-day il with a left hand laceration then Hunter Green, as I mentioned before, he goes to the IL, but that's retroactive to the 18th with that hip pain. Hopefully that's something you can get past. We'll see. Cedric Mullins actually just saw this come across the wire. Begins a rehab assignment on Tuesday. Uh, it wouldn't be an injury discussion without Anthony Radone. He goes to the 10-day IL with a left wrist contusion. I mean, I just feel so bad for Anthony Radone at this point. Like, it, it's not even a joke. It's just it's just see, sad and frustrating. After he tried to grab that fan and, like, punch him and get in a fight, you feel bad for him? Well, not so much that. Yeah. But I mean, okay. depending on what that fan said, I'm okay. Yeah. With it. I mean, he's an injured guy. By the way, thank you, Fabby. Fabby, <laughs> Fabby has uh, relented. No one's and above getting me, punched. So we're now in the best face. friends. You know, you want to run your mouth. Okay. I'm going to cut a little wrestling promo here. You want to run your oh. mouth? Nobody is above getting punched in the face. Listen, brother. All right. Yeah. So Except just Mike don't Tyson. run your mouth. You know, you think that you, yeah. you just say whatever you want. Everything, there's no consequences. That's a problem nowadays. Yeah. I was telling, you I know? was telling uh, Joe this story yesterday. I'll tell it real quick because there, I'll, there's something to it. So I went to the complex. I'll be quick about the show uh, to uh-huh. the Salt River Fields. Two games are going on yesterday. Diamondbacks, Giants, Cubs, and Rockies. How cool is that? And I'm over on the Rocky side and Mark McGuire's kid is pitching Mason McGuire. And would you know it? Mark McGuire's there. And that's like a childhood thing for me. I'm like, holy crap. Mark McGuire's here. Mm-hmm. Must have been in for Father's Day. His whole family is there. The whole brood is there. The wife, all the kids are watching their son. How cool is that? And Mark McGuire is still big. I went up to talk to him for a minute. He's still a big guy. You know, big barrel chair, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. There's a guy that was getting a little too close and hanging around <laughs> a little too much next to much. Mark. And between innings, was getting me nervous. And I was thinking... Someone's about to get punched right in the face. 
And that's one of those. No one is above, even when you're with your family, about getting punched in the face. And I don't think you want a smack in the kisser from Mark McGuire after seeing him, regardless of how old he is right now. I found Luis Arise's um, point total. He's at 217 and a half. Uh, and that is in a points league. In a points league. That I think is a very well structured points league. So he's right around the same spot as Yoshida, <laughs> excuse me, uh, Jeffrey, um, George Springer. Um, looking around the, the name and what does that rank so him though? Names. I gotta look exactly where he is. Hang but on. see, like that's not, that's never my point with uh, right. Actually, my whole point of this has been more about how silly these weighted algorithm stat things are that create these ranks. I hmm. think they're getting exposed. Um, points leagues, he's, he's awesome. Story Ruiz no has two hundred and eleven and a half points. Yeah, he so still has that point. I, that's how they should be valued closely. Uh, I think. But not I think elite. Col- neither yeah, are near and, elite. And I would throw in, someone said, I'm trying to scroll because I want to give them like credit, but I don't see who it is. Maybe it was Brian or something. Uh, but somebody much. but somebody said, you know, like, hey, when Disturi's in the lineup, it's like having, you know, four stolen bases locked in. And it's like, yeah, okay, sure. I, I agree with that. And I think that is good. But we mm. come back to, you know, these are one category players being ranked top 10, top mm-hmm. 25. Like, that's crazy. They are absolutely awesome and valuable. And I'm a little weird about that. But you know, the weighted algorithm of uh, some of how these players are ranked, I think <clears throat> is just uh, crazy, crazy in my mind. Or is three tenth overall? No, that's that's nuts. Uh, one more injury note. Lars Nupar returns from the 10-day IL as well. That'll make Welsh happy. Also happening today, yes. Alec Manoa is scheduled to throw a simulated game uh, tomorrow. Is it controlled though? Uh, it's going to be it a safe environment space? made completely of cotton candy. And uh, rainbows and sunshine. I don't uh, think he needs cotton pitch, candy around him, though. Just after every pitch, out. there will be uh, a song playing or something nice. Uh, there will be, uh, after the third inning, I believe there's a massage chair that he gets to sit in in order to you know, go through that. And then there will be positive reinforcements in the form of... Um, I believe fortune cookies or something to that nature would just give you a nice little things to think. You want to know a funny thing you just said though? Yeah. I don't even know this, but like in complex league games, when these guys are done, they actually do go over to a massage table and they'll have a trainer like work. (laughs) It's it's hilarious. Yeah. 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 Yeah, You weren't joking, but no cotton candy. Back in my day in 1964, let me tell you what we used to do. All right. We used to go get hammered and then we got till three in the morning. You wake up, you play a double header and you know what? You got paid $8. That's how you, that's how you throw no splitters, uh, (laughs) splitters or slutters. (laughs) nothing fastball down the middle no uh by the way also something kind of fun uh i don't know if you saw this yesterday uh the beer snake is becoming a thing so i did not know about this till today this somehow you didn't know about the beer i did not know about the beer snake i don't know how i missed this Uh, i got a lot of crap going on but the beer snake is is taking over i know there's rules with the beer snake too which is look you are trying not to interrupt the game but clearly you are when you're doing this uh how do you feel about the beer snake welsh i just wanted to know I'm fine with it. I think the, the there, there's definitely a dong bong like element that maybe they could get going with that. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, cut a hole mm-hmm. and sit down. Um, yeah. I mean, I think it's just people trying to have fun. It's funny. You said that I watched one of those videos of the guys that stacked the thing and then someone threw a, uh, like a ball at it and it broke and they stack all the stack, all the cups. Like I actually don't care about those things. I, I think it actually leaves a worse look when like the, the security or whatever comes over and like takes the snake or like has them knock down the little tower. Like let them do the thing. It's fun. Baseball's supposed to be fun. Does Alec Manoa no. get a trigger warning if a ball is called outside? That is really a strike. Put really headphones like... on him. Just like, <clears throat> you know? Yeah. Like, I mean, we're going to take this really far, you know, I'm just, <laughs> just preparing. Everybody. How safe are the spaces for Alec <laughs> Manoa is all that we're curious about. <laughs> Oh, all right, Max Scherzer, three up and three down. Look at Max Scherzer, eight innings, sticking it to me. Thanks, Max. Way to go. Uh, Mike Yastrzemski, three for five with a pair of homers. Juan Soto had a pair of homers, too. I went with Tatis. I should have gone with Soto. What do I know? Mm. Nothing. Uh, three down, Corbin Burns just got hammered. So my day was crap yesterday. So as much as I was on the heater for about, like, two weeks, yesterday was ugly. Burns was yeah. bad. Not Scherzer the good type of great. hammered he got either. Up was so. down, left was right. It was terrible. Uh, Brandon Nimmo was terrible too. 0 for 5, 3 Ks. Ian Happ 0 for 4 with 3 Ks as well. So lots of uh, bad bad mojo yesterday. Hopefully today it will get better. And it always starts to get better when we pick prizes. That's right, prize picks. Sign up for prize picks today. Use that promo code leading off when you do. You get 100% deposit match up to $100. Welsh, who are you picking today for the prize? 
Prize pickies, baby. Mm -hmm. Today I'm going to go with Randy Rosarena hits, runs, RBI combo of 1.5, like Randy mm -hmm. today. Going to go back to Corbin Carroll. Matchup seems to be good. He's doing the thing. He keeps going. I'm going to go with fantasy score of nine. I think the fantasy score on Corbin Carroll is one of my more favorite plays just because walk, steal, score, runs, hit homers. <laughs> he just does a little bit of everything. You're in the game at all times mm -hmm. with a fantasy score with Corbin Carroll. No doubt about it. And I'm going to combo that with a strikeout combo of Dylan Cease and Nate Eovaldi at 12 Point five. I'm going to take the over on that. So Randy hit run RBI, uh, Corbin Carroll score, Cease Evaldi strikeouts. That's my combo. Prize picks twenty to pay a hundred. Go do it. Leading yeah, off. Yeah, I promo can't believe code. I missed the beer snake thing. I've never seen this, and I see that I, soccer games now. I saw these pictures of it. I was like, how did I miss this? I've never. Uh, but you, you are you are we don't do this stuff in New York this City. Year. They don't do this no, stuff but in New you York. don't do anything. You're like, what's a jersey? They're, they're, what's they're a beer watch snake? Watch the game. They don't care about any other nonsense. That's, That's it. That's crazy. You know what? It really blew my mind. I remember the first time I went to Chicago and we were going to a Cubs game and I actually heard, I was listening on the radio because um, they still had radios then <clears throat> to the Cubs game as we were kind of driving there to the city because we were going the next day. And I couldn't get over all of this. We need some run stuff or boy, that's a, you know, and the announcer was so pro, like it's us against the world Cubs. And it really threw me off because New York is not like that at all. It is very down the middle. They kind of call it for the most part like that. There's no like we. Homerism. The word we yeah. has never come up that I ever heard in a New York broadcast in my entire life. That was really eye-opening or ear-opening, I should say, for me. Mm. So You know what I wonder? You know, I think about it. at night. I wonder what, what, keeps you what up Joe night, doesn't know. I think about the things you don't <laughs> know. What will There's be the next thing that you. you don't know? couple good things before I get to my prize picks here. Razor says... Manoa comeback player of the year. Have we ever had a player who was so bad and then came back it was great and then won that award? There's I don't think that no works chance. like that, but that's hilarious. There's zero There's no, chance. The only thing to that why is not? why is that not a comeback player of the year? Like you can't come they're like, no, you have to wait an entire year and then you can come back okay. next year and then we give Here's him the here's the scenario. He doesn't get he comes up after the All-Star break and he doesn't give up any runs or any hits and he strikes out 10 a game. That's why the only like caveat, we just talked about this the other day, like CC Sabathia in the second half after being mm -hmm. traded with Cy Young worthy and what he did. Right. If Manoa came back and was Cy Young like worthy, sure, but no. No, but I, I just, it's funny because I've never seen someone do that in a season. It's always like the next yeah, year you come back and you win that award. By the way, Brian Hayes talks about Manoa being a sock, sock, shoe, shoe guy. And uh, I think he's a sock shoe, sock shoe guy. What did we determine you were? Sock, sock, shoe, shoe. You put your socks oh. on first, then your sneakers. I don't know what kind of universe people put a sock in and then a shoe on. Well, I, what if there's a fire? Then you're running I out there. You got one sock and one shoe on and you're barefoot on the other side. At least if you run out there and all you got to do is the socks and there's an emergency, at least your feet are covered. At least I you don't got remember something. which one I am. I, I think I you might know what you are. I mean, you wake up every day, you put your socks and shoes on. You have no idea. I really don't like, I wear a lot of sandals. I, I wore sandals right. last night and I, and I, my, I was standing there and my <sighs> foot was hurting and I looked down, I had like 11 ants on me and I freaked out. And then I was like, Oh, I need to wear shoes more. 11 socks. Uh, sock. Let me pick some prizes. George Kirby, five and a half pitcher strikeouts over Justin Verlander. It's a low number against Houston. Again, I'm going to troll Houston a little bit because it feels like the right thing to do. Five is a low number. We'll go over on Verlander. Eovaldi's got six uh, against the White Sox. That's a low number too, especially I expect Anderson to be out of the lineup again. So go over there. Betting-wise today, there's um, a strikeout trio that I like. Spencer Strider at eight and a half under. We always go eight and a half unders. It's just good practice to do. Verlander five and a half yeah. over. George Kirby five and a half over. You get all of those three together, you get seven to one. So again, you can bet them all individually, like we were talking about, and then take that and put a little bit more on the parlay version. That's how I would approach that. Don't love all the games today, to tell you the truth. I like this approach. Welsh, what do you have for the betting approach today? On I kind of like on this your parlay. I'm going to tell yeah, you, Julian. I, I don't always well, like all of these. Minus but... 112, minus 106. <clears throat> you put it together, you get plus 709. So again, I think I... Yeah, under, I think... Verlander over, Kirby over. I might actually play that one. I might put those all together. I kind of dig that one. Um, I do have one strikeout prop for the day. I've got Nate Eovaldi uh, on the strikeout. Mm -hmm. Six and a half is plus 125 today. So I'm on Nate Eovaldi for the plus money. I like the Diamondbacks team total runs at four and a half up against Milwaukee. Colin Ray. And uh, Chicago up by a run is plus money through the first five 
or you can take the money line minus 145. Why do I like it? Marcus Stroman, your quality starts leader on the season. So, uh, or maybe just in the NL, but Marcus Stroman, I want to back him up against mm-hmm. Oviedo and the Pirates. So yeah. either one, you want to take the plus money for them to be up by a run or juice it up, pay the money line. And if they're tied, then you get your money back uh, on the first five for the Cubs. Those are my plays. All right. You should also be playing so rare. Go to fantasypros.com slash collect today. Sign up for so rare. So rare MLB is fun. It's fantasy. It's digital cards. You make your team. You compete against other people. You win. You get to invest in more cards to make your team better. It's cool. It's different. It's fun. Just like, well, she's all those things. And you can also join our league, fantasypros.com slash leading off league. Uh, Welsh today in the DFS world. Garrett Cole is 10.6. Framber is 10.9. If I'm going to go to 10.9, just give me Eovaldi at 11K. That's how I feel yeah. about it. Like at this point, just, I don't care. Just give me Nate Eovaldi at 11K. That's what I want. Kershaw's a 10-7, same thing. It's like, if I'm going to cross that threshold, then I'm going to go all the way to the top and just say, screw it, and just go ahead and just invest there. The Dodgers, the Padres, and your Arizona Diamondbacks, that's also offenses that I'm looking for today stack-wise. Jake McCarthy, 2.6. Alec Thomas and Bo Naylor, free squares, 2.0, oh. 2.0K. So that lets you, if you want to know how to get to Nate Eovaldi, it's like how to get to Sesame Street. It's Alec Thomas and it's Bo Naylor. You put those two guys in, you get Eovaldi, then you can get whatever else you want. That's how you play DFS, folks. Also, uh, home run calls. Uh, again, we do have our board today, so let's take a look at it. Drum roll, please. <laughs> Boom, Razor, just like his Cincinnati Reds, still at the top. Ooh. 27, J.J. Tater at 24, everybody else got 23 and 22. Uh, help us in Miami back up on the board. Look at that. So I did not Larry. get a home run today, or yesterday, I should say. Uh, So today I'm going to try to get back on the board. Corbin Carroll is my spot. Going with our boy here, our uh, our national treasure that is Corbin Carroll. Welsh, where are you going for your home run call today? Yeah, I like the Corbin Carroll one. Uh, I'm going to go today with the Mookie of the Bets. Mookie's Ah, Bets. Yes, against uh, Reed Detmer's little lead off here. So Mookie's Bets is going to be my play for today. Got to get back on the board. I think I need like two to get on. So I need to have a big home run week. Need that Mark McGuire uh, juju to uh, rub off on me. I don't remember what Mookie's real name is. It's Marcus, right? I think it's Marcus. Uh, (laughs) Isn't it Mookie? (laughs) No, it's not Mookie. Yeah, I don't know. Mookie Wilson, I think his name was Hayward. I want to say his real name was Hayward. Mookie. So do you know your Mookies with Joe and the Welsh? That's our next game. So I'm typing it in here. I think his name is and Marcus. Oh, it it is. It's Marcus Lynn. M-A-R-K-U-S. Marcus, Marcus Lynn. Oh, with a K. Betts. Ah. Ah, I see what you did there. And what about Mookie Wilson? I thought his name was Hayward. I'm I'm done looking up Mookies. That's it. All my Mookie searching. What happens is done. if you Google too many Mookies? I, I on that I, note. <laughs> That'll do it for us today, but the story of the game goes on for the Welsh. I'm Joey P. We'll see you next time, kids. Enjoy your Tuesday. We'll be back again to do it tomorrow. Sign up right now. Subscribe to Fancy Bros. MLB. Do see it. you later, boys and girls. Bye, Mookies. Bye. Bye.